So the first case that we have here, this is a seborrheic keratosis. These are kind of benign um, keratinocyte proliferations that usually occur on older people and have this kind of uh, stuck on appearance. Usually they're dark in color. And microscopically, there's a variety of different patterns that you can see. This one's kind of the acanthotic pattern. The epidermis is really thick. Look, here's the normal epidermis. You can see the thickness of it right there. And then here's the lesion. Look at how thickened, how elongated the reedy ridges are. They're really thick and fat and filled with cells. And the reedy ridges all kind of interconnect together as they come down. Let's find our arrow here. See, they come down and they kind of interconnect and kind of spread along, uh, merging with each other. And what is left behind are these uh, cystic spaces that are filled with, usually with loose um, orthokeratin. So this is a dead keratin like you would have up here in the corneal layer. It's the same stuff that you have that's accumulating down here. And these are not really cysts, these are pseudocysts because if you cut deep enough, what will happen is these cysts actually connect up to the surface. So this is kind of uh, a funny uh, artifact of the way we cut through and section the tissue. So these are called horn pseudocysts. So you get a thickening of the um, epidermis and it's made of these kind of small, some people say basaloid, I don't really like that term personally because I think these look quite a bit different than basal cells, but they're kind of small keratinocytes that are usually very uniform and monotonous, and they often have pigment in them, and that's why these lesions look dark brown uh, clinically. You can see that pigment there, that's melanin pigment. Now remember that melanocytes make melanin and then they kind of feed it to their neighboring keratinocytes. So just because these are brown, it doesn't mean that they're actually um, melanocytes are actually keratinocytes and you can see this little halo that they have if you have a little halo with a naked nucleus in the middle that's a good sign that you're probably dealing with a keratinocyte not a melanocyte all right so this is um, a seborrheic keratosis and these are benign sometimes they can clinically look uh, like melanoma or uh, other melanocytic lesions here's another cut from the same lesion and look again those uh, thickening of the epidermis um, and these horn pseudocysts that are filled with that orthokeratin. Now, if you start seeing a bunch of dense pink keratin with retained nuclei, parakeratosis, in the middle of these pseudocysts, then you have to stop and think about uh, the possibility of a subtle squamous cell carcinoma, because squamous cells, they tend to make little uh, keratin pearls, but instead of it being loose orthokeratin like this, it usually has parakeratosis in the middle. Um, when separate keratoses get inflamed or irritated, though, they can also make parakeratin down in those um, horn pseudocysts. So don't um, you don't wanna use that as a hard and fast rule, but it is a, a thing that's worth considering. And another thing that I think is useful about seborrheic keratoses, let me get in focus here, is that they usually kind of grow up from the surface of the skin, they kind of push up, and that actually if you, you can kind of draw a straight line across the bottom of the lesion most of the time. See, if we go up to the top piece, we can do the same thing. The lesion looks like it's growing down, but it's actually not. It's actually pushed up like a little dome above the skin, and you can draw a straight line across the bottom. So, separate keratoses usually do not infiltrate down into the skin. They kind of push up. See, again, the same thing on the third piece here. You can draw a straight line underneath. So, thickening, uh, a thickened uh, lesion that's kind of arising from the epidermis made of bland, small keratinocytes, often with melanin pigment, and then horn pseudocysts, uh, that's a seborrheic keratosis. Okay, let's do the next case. Oh, we'll make it the right side up. Now this lesion is so big that we can't actually even put the whole thing underneath the microscope. But let's look and see if we can figure out what this is. It's a lot bigger than the previous case and all that bright red stuff, that's keratin. Just like the last case, it's just a little more dense. That's why it looks so red. And also I think this slide um, uh, may have just picked up some of more of the eosin stain. But look, if you see the epidermis is thickened, the reedy ridges are really elongated and fusing together, and what you're left with are these horn pseudocysts again, these kind of pseudocystic areas in between. And look, when you get a certain cut here, you can see that those cysts aren't really cysts at all. They open up to the surface. That's why we call them pseudocysts. And um, here it almost looks a little bit warty. So you can sometimes think about a verruca or a wart with this lesion. But look right here, you get kind of a straight line across the bottom. I think this is another example of seborrheic keratosis. This one is very irritated and inflamed. It's got an area over here that you can see is really thick and has got a lot of uh, lymphocytes, a lot of inflammation. So sometimes these lesions get really inflamed over time. And when they do, they can sometimes mimic squamous carcinoma. Uh, clinically, and look at all that pigment there. This is why they look so dark. Not only is the pigment in the keratinocytes, which you can see up here, there's pigment in keratinocytes, but there's also these little, these little branchy, thin dendritic cells 
Dendritic means it has little branches or arms. Sorry, let me adjust the light a bit. And those are actually melanocytes. Those are those are pigmented uh, melanocytes that are kind of uh, dendritic. You can tell because of their little branching processes. So melanocytes usually aren't very darkly pigmented, but sometimes they are. So there's always exceptions to every rule in dermatopathology. And uh, sometimes dendritic melanocytes get caught up in the middle of a seborrheic keratosis and they further contribute to the dark color. And also when seborrheic keratoses get inflamed, they often will do this. They'll drop melanin pigment out of the epidermis and into the dermis. And then um, macrophages come and eat that up. And so that's, those are called melanophages. So if you see real dark cells in the dermis, usually they're going to be melanophages, which are pigmented macrophages that are eating up the melanin. Usually they're not melanocytes. Again, exceptions exist for all of these rules, but that's kind of a good rule of thumb. If you see real dark cells in the dermis, most of the time they're melanophages. So going back to lower power here, again, even in this area that's more inflamed, you can see it's a thickened uh, lesion arising from the epidermis. You've got horn pseudocysts, which is a really useful clue from low power. And again, when they look kind of darker blue or purple, you know, sometimes squamous cell carcinomas can have this same kind of pattern. So go a little closer and look, but I still think that the cells here are very uh, uniform and monotonous looking, and I think that's good. And sometimes they can get a, a little bit of atypia and some mitotic activity when a, a separate keratosis gets really inflamed. And you see, when you get irritation or inflammation in a separate keratosis, sometimes the horn pseudocysts do begin to produce parakeratin. So again, I always look a little closer when I see that just to make sure I'm not missing a squamous cell carcinoma. But in this case, I think what we have is just a very big, robustly irritated and inflamed uh, seborrheic keratosis. This is a very large one, and I can imagine that if I had that on my skin, I would want it to be removed as well. Probably very uncomfortable.